Hey everyone, today is an exciting day. Patch 1.2 has been released, not only with minor changes, but a brand new game mode called Jetpack Cargo. In today's video, I'll be going over everything you need to know to how to dominate in Jetpack Cargo. I'll be going over the basics first, such as the main elements of the game mode itself, and after that, I'll get into 10 basic to advanced tips and things you might not have known about this game mode to get you ahead of the game. To join a match of Jetpack Cargo, you have to go to the main menu and select the image with the Jetpack Cargo game mode. This game mode is currently not in the multiplayer menu. This probably has to do with it being a temporary game mode. Once you load into the match, you'll be able to see that there's two different blasters that you can use with your jump trooper. The pistol option gives you the SC-44C blaster pistol. And the rifle option gives you the A280. Each of these gives you opportunities for different situations. The A280 for longer range combat and the SC-44C for closer quarter combat. Make sure to check out my blaster guides on my channel which include the A280 by pressing the info tab on the top right corner of the screen right now. The jump troopers themselves besides the blasters cannot be modified. The regular jump trooper class can be modified by star cords that can increase health, make your jetpack have faster cooldown times, and more, but none of that affects the jump trooper that you can use in jetpack cargo. I guess the developers decided to do this for balancing purposes, to keep everybody on the same level you could say. All the jump troopers in this game mode have fast ability recharge. That gives you a lot more maneuverability. It really picks up the speed of this entire game mode. Another change just for this game mode is that the middle ability, the rocket launcher, is a bit different from the regular jump trooper. The rocket launcher now can fire two rockets, then you wait and then fire another two rockets. In this game mode with this variant of the rocket launcher, you never have to unequip the rocket launcher. When spawning in, one thing you might notice is that there's no spawn waves in this game mode. Everyone spawns by themselves on their own time. If you die and you're waiting to respawn, you can check the little timer in the bottom left corner on your screen. The jetpack cargo objectives are a little bit different from the cargo in Battlefront 1, so that's what I'll be going over next. Jetpack cargo consists of two defense points and three cargo spawns. Your goal is to take the cargo once it spawns and run jetpack and do whatever you can to deliver the cargo to your respective home base. Your home base is signaled by the blue beacon of light that shoots up in the sky. Once you get near the beacon, you'll notice that around the stationary carrier, there is a blue dotted line surrounding it. That line indicates the location that you have to be in to start capturing the objective. It takes a few seconds to capture and score a point for your team. The first team that captures 3 cargo boxes wins. This game mode does not have a timer, so in theory, if the teams are balanced correctly, you could have a very long and quite fun match of jetpack cargo. It would include a lot of back and forth tug of war over that one single cargo box. Now let's move into some tips strategies for this game mode. I'll also number them while I'm at it. If you know what direction the enemies are coming from, and you know that they're going to reach the cargo before your team, instead of you rushing out to get the cargo, you can find an elevated position and use your rocket launcher the second the enemies pick up the cargo. One strategy that people do is waiting at the enemy objective instead of going for the cargo so that if the enemy cargo runner ends up making it all the way to their base without any resistance, you can still have a chance to save a point for your team. When running the cargo box, if there are any enemies attacking you while you claim the objective, you can run and dash around and you can still capture the objective as long as you stay within the capture radius. If you step out of the capture radius, it will reset and you'll have to go back in again and start all over. If you're looking for a lot of eliminations in this game mode, you're going to want to stay near the cargo box at all times. And here's why. 
The way Jetpack Cargo was made is that all the players end up going for the objectives because it's so easy to get points if you leave somebody with the cargo. But if you throw a bunch of people on the moving objective, it slows it down, tugging it back and forth. And that's where you're going to get a high elimination count. If you decide to use your rocket launcher full time and use it as a primary weapon, watch out. If you fire two rockets and an enemy comes up to you, you might want to change back to your blaster because it does take a bit of time to reload the two rockets. Leading shots are essential in this game mode. The rocket launchers fly at a quite a slow speed, so you're going to have to predict the enemy movements in order to hit them at a distance. You'll simply learn this skill by playing the game mode. Use the jetpack dash to have even more maneuverability. The jetpack dash is simply triggered when you press the roll key or the button on your respective platform. This is the biggest thing I see people missing out on. Extra movement to avoid getting shot at, plus you can do it forward. So if you're running the cargo and all your abilities are on cooldown, feel free to dash forward. It can't hurt considering it, it's faster than running. In addition to the jetpack dash, it can also be extremely beneficial for avoiding enemy rocket fire. If you see an enemy jumping up in the air, make sure to keep an eye on him, as you might never know where they're going to shoot a rocket aiming right for you. If you prepare to dash, you can anticipate where the rocket's going to go and dash in the opposite direction. Moss Eisley has multiple different types of settings, such as sunny, sunset, and nighttime. Make sure to use the cover of the night to your advantage. This will only really work as the rebels, but you never know. If you can figure out a way to hide in the dark with a white jetpack trooper, then great! Try to keep the high ground as much as possible. Not to be cliche with the whole Revenge of the Sith quote, but seriously, this is important. From what I've noticed out of my time playing this game mode, it's a lot better to stay on top of the buildings. Simply because 1. You have more maneuverability than being still in a tight corridor and 2. You'll have a lot less chance of blowing yourself up with a rocket launcher. You have a jetpack, put it to good use and fly from rooftop to rooftop. My hope for this game mode is it to be more of the somewhat competitive edge of the Battlefront community. Not completely com competitive though, but for those who can keep up with the quick pace of the game mode. I would love to see this game mode on all the other maps in the game. I mean, just imagine, Kashyyyk or even Hawk. Jetpack Cargo has a lot of potential and I can't wait to see where it goes in the future. If you enjoyed the video or learned something new, feel free to drop a like. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe for more Battlefront 2 guides, live streams, and more. I'm Infinite Potatoes, and I'll see you on the Battlefront.